Okay, hello. Um, we're in Sunderland at the moment and we've been working with our lottery funded project Belief in the North East to explore a more or less abandoned Jewish cemetery. The part of Sunderland we're in is on the edge of the city centre. It's an area which used to be docks and a thriving working class neighbourhood. But uh, in more recent years, the area has been cleared. There's a big B&Q. There's lots of industry around here and no population. And I'm, I've been working for the last day or so in this small, tiny enclosure, maybe kind of 30 metres by 30 metres, which was used through the, well, from the late 18th century and through most of the 19th century as a cemetery for the small Jewish population in Sunderland. Um, unfortunately, that early Jewish population in Sunderland kind of really died out in the later 19th century. And it was replaced by a, a new Jewish community from a different part of the world. So this particular cemetery fell out of use. And it's quite unusual in being a cemetery that wasn't abandoned recently, but a cemetery that's been abandoned really probably for maybe 120, 140 years. Uh, and with Belief in the North East, we've been trying to do some clearance, get cut back some of the vegetation, because with the few remaining gravestones, they're being damaged by, by plants and, and, and shrubs growing onto them and into them. We've also been trying some traditional archeological techniques, like geophysical survey, try and see if there's anything remaining beneath the ground, such as other gravestones we've not been able to investigate yet. We're also recording what survives of the gravestones. And we've got a small number of upstanding gravestones, and there's quite a few fragments of broken gravestone. And they're badly eroded, uh, they're not in great condition. So what we're just trying to do is get a basic record, get photographs, uh, record the inscriptions, which are partly in English, partly in Hebrew, just so in the future, no matter what happens with the cemetery moving forward, and that's something which is out of our hands, we have at least a basic level record of the site as it is today in 2023. So we know where the gravestones are and what they say. We know where the burials which survive are. We know if there's anything surviving beneath the ground. Uh, and we can get some good basic photographs of the site. So it's a difficult site, it's a complicated site, its future is uncertain, but what we're doing will at least be a kind of benchmark for anything that happens going forward. So this site is a really interesting community history. It starts off as a cemetery for the um, first Jewish community in Sunderland. They came from the Netherlands, and they are a kind of fairly wealthy middle-class mercantile community but they were replaced by a different Jewish community, mainly drawn from Lithuania, and they were coming in in the, in the later 19th century. And those two, two Jewish communities had very little to do with each other. So even, even in, the, in the 20th century, this earlier cemetery was kind of slowly forgotten as the, the, new, the new Jewish community were burying elsewhere in the city. Then itself, that, 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 that more recent Sunderland Jewish community has slowly over time disappeared. So we're not at one remove from the community who uses cemetery, we're really at, at two removes. The footprint of a cemetery has always been respected when there's been clearance around here and when, when the, uh, the working class housing and the, connected to the people who worked at the docks were, were, was demolished, the site of the cemetery stayed. It was, it was protected in as far as its boundaries were respected. But now we're standing in an area which used to be a thriving working class community. And now we've got a B and Q, we've got a domestic tip, we've got industrial buildings, we've got um, kind of a post-industrial landscape. And this little patch of scrubland, which if you didn't know what you were looking for, you would just think was a tiny patch of urban wasteland, is still still here there is still this, this relics of this early important community in in Sunderland but uh, a community for which there is no no one claiming responsibility um, which means it's it's a it's it's difficult heritage there's some really interesting questions about who owns this site well we know who the landowners are but who has that moral responsibility about dealing with a site like this when there's no longer any direct family connections, when there's no longer anyone in the immediate area who can come in and cut the grass and cut back the vegetation. So a site like this, I think, raises some really interesting questions for people interested in history and heritage of Northeast England. 
where does responsibility lie, both legally but also kind of morally and ethically. And we can only make a small contribution to trying to unpick that. We can record it as it is now, but moving ahead, I think its future is probably as uncertain as it has been for the last several decades. I think a site like this also presents some other complex and difficult problems. Um, we live in a world where, sadly, anti-Semitism is still a thing. And sites like this can potentially become the focus for unwelcome attention. And another one of the challenges we're having to face is, does looking after this site, preserving it, talking about it, will that potentially draw unwelcome attention? And I think it's a very difficult tightrope we have to walk as heritage professionals about preserving a really important part of our heritage in the North East. It's a, it's a region where we've had communities coming in from elsewhere, but those communities have come and they've gone. They're communities which some people have very problematic attitudes towards. Should we neglect that heritage? Should we preserve it but not talk about it? Or should we talk about it and potentially open it up to threats? I'm not sure there is a right or wrong answer for something like that. But at least hopefully by doing the basic recording work, we've got some kind of record uh, going forward, no matter what happens to the site. In terms of what we're actually doing on site, well, one of the great things about the Belief in the North East project is that we can call on lots of volunteers. So we've had plenty of people coming to help doing really basic things like hacking back the vegetation, getting rid of the shrubs which are damaging the site, and then we're treating it like um, any other archaeological site. We're not, we're not excavating, we're not digging, because obviously it's a cemetery. But what we are doing is we're doing geophysical survey, we've done magnetometry and resistivity, um, and that'll help us potentially pick up gravestones which have got covered by the earth, uh, and potentially any other structures in the cemetery. We are doing recording, we're recording the graves carefully with record sheets, we're making photographs, we're using surveying techniques and uh, GPS satellite systems to geographically locate all the, all the monuments spatially. We, are, we will in future be doing digital photogrammetry, so making three-dimensional models of the things which will hopefully help us read some of the inscriptions which are very difficult to read. We'll be consulting with colleagues in Durham elsewhere to help us read the, um, read the Hebrew inscriptions. And at the end of it we'll have uh, a, a report which will treat this site as, a, a, as an historic site with time depth, We'll look at the use of space, we'll look at the actual monuments, we'll look about what's recorded, who's recorded, and then of course we can use the archives available, historic newspapers, archives in the local record centre, to find out more about the people who are actually buried here. Because we've got the names of individuals, we can perhaps find out where they lived, where they worked, their broader family connections. So we're just at the beginning of finding out about this aspect of the Jewish community that was here in Sunderland in the 19th century. For more information about the Belief in the Northeast project, check out the link in the video description below.